In this video, we're going to talk about how to develop great tone with your orchestra. This is the first thing that you want to do when you are her star dancer is make sure that your students can play with great tone because it's going to fix a lot of other problems. Star dancer is intoned in the lower strings of, of each instrument, a lot of G string material in the violins, a lot of C string material in viola cello, and the basses play on the A string quite a bit. So we got to figure out how we're going to get a nice rich sound on these lower strings. The lower strings have more mass to them, so they require more activation force. So your students are going to need to learn how to grab the string with the bow so that they can activate that string and start to get tone. If they don't grab the string, that's not likely to happen. So the first thing that you need to do is just have your students be able to set the bow on the string, the G string for violins, the C string for violas and cellos, and the A string for basses. Set the bow on the string and apply some grab or some grip to that string and then try to wiggle the string without making any sound. That's step one. The next step is to make sure your students can apply enough weight to the string. So we need them to be able to play with enough weight that we can change the shape of that string, you know, bend it a little bit, and also change the shape of the camber of the bow. So we're pressing enough to be able to change the shape of the bow and change the shape of the string. So first we learn how to establish our grip. We set the bow, try to wiggle the string, and then we lean into the string to make sure that we can put down enough weight to make those low strings sound good. All right, so we've got grip and we've got weight, but we're in a static position. We haven't moved the bow yet. Now we need to figure out if we can keep that grip and that weight from frog to tip and then from tip back to frog in all parts of the bow. So we're gonna do some whole note exercises. I like to keep with the G strings for violins, the C strings for viola, cello, and the A string for basses and they're all going to play these strings together. It's going to sound like a A minor 7 chord with, a, with the E missing, and that's okay. You know, just pretend like you're doing uh, Burt Bacharach, you know, without the E minor 7 before it, and you'll be fine. So for this exercise, we need to grip the string. I want everybody to be in bowling lane 2, and we're going to try whole notes and see if we can play whole notes from frog to tip. While staying in bowing lane two, we don't want the bow sliding anywhere, and we want to make sure that we can use enough grip and enough weight from frog to tip. Now, for this exercise, you don't want to keep the grip down the whole time. You don't want a really crunchy sound from frog to tip. You want to grip the beginning of it and then apply your weight and keep your weight down from frog to tip. Now, sometimes I like to do other exercises where I do grab the string and I keep that gritty sound from frog to tip. But for this, it's not 100% necessary. And if I'm in a festival or some sort of clinic and I don't have a lot of time to work, um, I'm just going to work on what's needed for this piece. So we have whole notes, four counts down, four counts up. If you're in a festival or a clinic and there's other directors that are around and they're, they're watching, you know, I like to, to put them to good use. I like to come have them work with your orchestra. And if it's just you by yourself, you don't need to stand in front of them. You can sit, put on a metronome and go around and fix bow holds and fix bow motion and point out, be like, hey, bowling lane two, hey, bowling lane two, bowling lane two. And the more directors, the merrier. Get them up and get them active. You know, uh, dr directors love to help. They, they love to be up and working with the students and, and that's good for them. Sitting down, you know, they kind of get bored. So invite them up, have them work with you. If it's just you by yourself, walk around the room and, and fix bow holds. And, and fix bowing lanes. All right, so we're able to, to play whole notes. We're able to grip the string. We're able to keep that weight down from frog to tip. That's great. Now we're going to try half notes. Now for the half notes, we, we may not want to go all the way from frog to tip. It's, it's not 100% practical for this, but we do want to use a lot of bow. So maybe from the balance point to the upper half, back to the balance point, something like that, but definitely a lot of bow. We don't want to use tiny bows on the half notes. So once they're comfortable with the whole notes, then go on to half notes, and you might want to try with the quarter notes too, okay? Quarter notes, smaller bow for the quarter notes, but we still want to have grip to activate the string, and we still want to have enough weight to make those lower 
strings sound good. And at some point, we're also going to need to play eighth notes. So we might have to figure out how to grip that string in order to play eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and to make sure that we can have good tone on our eighth notes too. All of this stuff needs to happen. The students need to get comfortable with that stuff before we start working finger patterns because they have to have good tone. They have to have something that they can tune to. And if they don't have quality sound, it's really hard to hear well for for pitch because we're not creating that resonance that we need to be able to hear the ringtones and to make sure that we're playing with a characteristic sound that can be tuned easily by young students. The first two measures of Star Dancer are going to be a good metric for whether or not we've mastered our tone. Everybody but first violins are playing. We've got these half notes, quarter, quarter, half, quarter, quarter. If we're able to get through this with good sound, it's a good indicator that we're ready to go on and play other stuff. You can have your first violins play along with everybody playing open G too. I don't know why not. These double stops are not marked. It's not marked Divisi or non Divisi, but it's always a good idea to read your score, even if it's just a little paragraph, because it will tell you that you are supposed to play double stops. So make sure that you read your score. There's other things that we can do with Tone 2 to help us with Star Dancer. We can take a look at 19 and make sure that we can have good tone on our lower strings while playing in a softer dynamic. So that might be something that we want to work on, making sure our strings are still vibrating, but also soft. The second violins are still on the G string for a note. Um, fortunately, almost everybody else is on the D string, a little bit of A string stuff in, in first violin. So it's not as challenging. And measures 24 and 25, our cellos cross down to the G string here for a bit and our bass players are playing on the A string. Make sure they play this second finger. It's not marked, but play this second finger. It's C natural, so that they have this B to C half step here, first finger, second finger, not fourth finger, so be careful because a lot of young bass players will try to play that C sharp, but we want to make sure that our students are able to play those eighth notes softly with good tones, so you might want to spend some time there before we're forte again at 27. In the next video, we're going to address pitch. It's really important to have good pitch in Star Dancer. If it's out of tune, it's not going to sound great. The audience isn't going to like it, and the students aren't going to enjoy it as much. So I'm going to give you some strategies on how to work on some of these finger patterns and make it fun so that everybody's having a good time. So we'll catch you in the next one.